What is going on everyone? This is Eric coming at you from just outside of Hartford, Connecticut. And today we are going to be discussing the Jason Veritek trade, which occurred back on July 31st, 1997. Now this was a trade between the Boston Red Sox and the Seattle Mariners, as it saw Boston acquire a pair of prospects from Seattle in exchange for an established relief pitcher. So how did this trade work out? We'll start by discussing the Boston Red Sox haul. Now the first player that they got was catcher Jason Veritek. And he had been a well-regarded prospect in the Mariners system up to this point. And he would appear in a single game in the 97 season for Boston. Now, in 98, he would split the starting job, and he took the starting catching job in 1999. From there on out, he ran with the job. He ended the 99 season with a 269 average and 20 homers. Now, he did regress a little bit in the 2000 season, hitting 248 with only 10 home runs. But he rebounded well to start the 2001 campaign, hitting 293 with seven homers through late May. However, he would hurt his elbow, and this injury kept plaguing him for the rest of the season. So it effectively, while it didn't officially end his season, it really limited him from there on out when he was able to play. Now, in 2002, he hit 266 with 10 homers. Now, while his offensive numbers may not have been elite, his knowledge of the game and his defense and pitch framing were top notch. He had one of his better seasons offensively speaking in 2003 as he hit a career high 25 homers as well as a 273 average. He had another very strong year in the 04 season as he set career highs in average with 296, stolen bases with 10s, and unfortunately for him, strikeouts with only 126 while also hitting 18 homers. Now he was involved in a bench clearing fight against New York Yankees as he stuck his glove in A-Rod's face after A-Rod was hit by a pitch and made a move towards the Boston pitcher. This was one of the bigger fights, and of course, living in New England, there's many pictures of this exact moment where Veritek has his glove in A-Rod's face. I remember that game, too. Now, he had a very strong showing during the 2004 playoffs, but he really stepped up in the ALCS against their arch-rival New York Yankees. In that series... He would hit 321 with a pair of homers and seven runs scored. Now, Boston would go on to break the curse and win the World Series that year. And uh, fortunately for him, he was a free agent after the season. Now, his leadership, as well as a strong offense in the playoffs, earned him a new contract. And with that, the title of captain of the Boston Red Sox. Now, he continued to excel in 2005 as he hit 281 with 22 homers. This year saw him win a gold glove and a silver slugger to show you how great he was. He could do it all, offense and defense. Now, he did have somewhat of a down year in 2006, as he hit just 238 with 12 homers, and he missed a chunk of a time due to a knee injury. But he returned to form in 2007, when he hit 255 along with 17 homers. He would have a rough ALDS that year, but he stepped it up in the ALCS, where he hit 269, and more importantly, in the World Series when he hit 333 as the Red Sox won their second World Series in four years. Unfortunately, after the 2007 season, he began to decline due to older age and just, uh, you know, lack of skill. Injuries had caught up to him, I should say. Now, he would hit 220 in 2008 and 209 in 2009. Now, midway through the 2009 season, he was actually moved into a backup role. Now, he would spend the 2010 and 2011 seasons as a backup, hitting 232 and 221 in more better needed matchups for him. You know, he would go up against a pitcher that he could hit. So that kind of worked in his favor. Now, he would retire after the 2011 season, but his impact will not be forgotten in Boston. He was a three-time All-Star, a two-time World Series champ, a one-time Gold Glove winner, a one-time Silver Slugger, and he spent all he spent seven years as captain of the Boston Red Sox. He is also a member of the Red Sox Hall of Fame. All said and done, he had a war of 24.2, which for a catcher is pretty respectable. Now, Boston didn't just get Veritek. They also got pitcher Derek Lowe. Now, Lowe didn't have the best start in Boston as he split his first year and a half in the bullpen and starting rotation. But in the 99 season, he would end up getting moved to the closer role and he would play well, recording 15 saves. Now, his 2000 season was probably one of, if not the best career season of his career as he led the league in saves with 42. Now, through July of 2001, he had 24 saves, but he ended up losing the closer's role. 
As a result, he requested to he requested to be moved, and he was moved to the starting rotation near the end of 2001. Now, he would have a great year in 2002, as he had a 21-8 record and a 2.58 ERA. He also threw a no-hitter that year on April 27th. He finished third in AL Cy Young voting that year. So, actually, I'd say 2002 was the best year of his career. Now, he had a 17-7 record in 2003, but he had a somewhat ugly 4.47 ERA. Now, bad luck would strike him in the ERA department in 2004, as he ended the year with a 5.42 ERA, but his FIP was a full run less. He also had a 14-12 record in 2004. He went 3-0 with a 1.86 ERA during Boston's run to the 2004 World Series, and he would throw seven shutout innings in the World Series deciding Game 4. So he definitely stepped up when they needed him to. Now, after the 2004 season, he would walk as he signed a big deal with, I believe, the LA Dodgers. He was a two-time All-Star, a one-time World Series champ. He led the AL in saves one time, and he threw a no-hitter. And he is also, just like Veritek, a member of the Boston Red Sox Hall of Fame. And he had a career war of 19.4 for the Red Sox. So Boston got a ton with these two players. How did Seattle do? So the Seattle Mariners got relief pitcher Heathcliff, Slocum. And Slocum struggled in Seattle, unfortunately. He would go 2-9 and nine with a 4.97 ERA across a year and a half. He did, however, record 13 saves, but when you look at it, all things considered, not a great trade for Seattle as they got a .4 war. So all said and done, Boston hands over heels wins this trade. They dominated with a 43.6 war. Seattle got a .4 war. But really, Boston's the real winners here, getting two elite players, you know, getting a captain, a guy who was a l- big member of your team for over a decade in Veritech, and getting Derek Lowe, who really stepped up when you needed him to in 4 You can't complain. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was the Jason Veritech trade. Have a good rest of your day.